Hi, my name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. It is day three of Tease the Season and I am counting down to Christmas with the Plum Deluxe Tea Lovers Advent Calendar. Disclosure, it was sent to me for free. Uh, which I'm gonna have to like say in every single video and, and that's gonna get old, but transparency. But I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into day number three, get the steepin up, so that uh, we can chat about some tea and uh, perhaps some Christmas movies today. So let's see what we're sipping. We have some rainy day pour, and this is a blend of pour tea, cinnamon bark, orange peel, ginger root, anise, safflower, sweet cinnamon extract, and love and gratitude. This smells so good. This smells like Christmas. There's something about the combination of like cinnamon and anise that just makes me think Christmas. Okay, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, poor blends can be a little bit iffy, but this, this one smells, this one smells really good. Okay, let's get steeping. combination of the sweet cinnamon and the anise, uh, especially since the anise is, I mean, I love the flavor of anise. I love the, I love that black licorice flavor. I think the thing that like is even more interesting is that the anise in this, I, at least I think it's the anise, um, it's creating this menthol cooling sensation on my tongue. It's It's quite an experience. And I appreciate that they chose pour for the base of this tea. I think that the combination of like anise and cinnamon and black tea is like sort of like a wintertime favorite. It's, 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 a, it's a pretty common blend, especially around this time of year. So I love that they chose pour as the base for this blend as opposed to like a black tea. At least in this particular blend, the pour is is pretty mild, so if you're somebody who's intimidated by poir, this could be a good place to start. It's just like a really subtle earthiness. I think the earthiness sort of embodies this idea of a rainy day, so I, I'm really digging this one. I'm also getting a little bit of heat, a little bit of those ginger tingles dancing around on my tongue. This one's a pleasure to drink. It tastes good, but I also really love the physical effect it's having on me. Like, the ginger tingles and the menthol sensation of the anise. It's, it's really interesting. But about those Christmas movies, um, I started early this year. I, I think, I mean, just in general, I started Christmas early this year. I think I had the Christmas tree up the first week of November, which I don't know if that's too soon. I know everybody thought that that was perfectly reasonable back in 2020. I don't know if things changed in 2021. I don't care. It has brought me so much joy seeing this little Christmas tree just lit up in the corner of our of our living room. But I also started watching Christmas movies about halfway through November and I just for the most part I have them streaming in the background as I work. But I even have my husband in on like the Christmas movie bender. He created this calendar for us starting with uh, Thanksgiving going all the way to Christmas Day where he just like listed all the movies that we're gonna watch. But that list got me thinking like, what are my top five Christmas movies? And I think I was able to narrow it down. So they are Elf with Will Ferrell. Is there a person alive who doesn't like this movie? I don't know. We even have a Buddy the Elf that comes to my village uh, every year for like we have a big Christmas festival that gets put on here, but we have a we have a person that dresses up as Buddy the Elf that kids take pictures with. So, I mean, I just, who would have thought that Will Ferrell as 
a, a human elf person would become like an iconic Christmas character. Uh, number two is The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I, I think I've watched this movie every single year since it was released. And then we have Charlie Brown Christmas because it has like the most iconic soundtrack. Number four, another one from my childhood and I don't really know how I got away with watching it, but <laughs> National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I love that movie. Uh, I, I, I introduced my husband to it for the first time a couple years ago. Like I'm completely stunned that he had never seen it. That the first time he watched it, he was like, I don't know, 30 years old. Like that just, that just like boggles my mind. And then number five, <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about it before on this channel, but number five is A Christmas Prince and both of its sequels, like The Royal Wedding and The Royal Baby or whatever, something like that. That tends to be, at least the last couple of years, A Christmas Prince tends to be the movie that kicks off my Christmas movie Bender. I don't remember when Netflix put it up, but like I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to watch it. But like it was sometime in November, I'm like, this is really unreasonable. I don't think I can sit here and start my, my Christmas movies in November. But sure enough, I did and I have zero regrets. I think I've watched a Christmas movie, at least one Christmas movie a day since like November 15th. And now there's like one more <laughs> that might be added to this list that is sort of like in the same vein as like a Christmas Prince. I think it's a Netflix original. But The Castle for Christmas, which is like an enemies to lovers story that takes place in a castle in Scotland at Christmas time, and it stars Brooke Shields and more importantly, the ever dashing Carrie Alwis from A Princess Bride and Robin Hood Men in Tights. I watched this a couple days ago and I had it streaming in the background as I worked and it was like one of those, it was like one of those movies slash work days where like I'm like trying to stay focused but like was was doing one of these things just like just like typing and like watching over my shoulder and I think I have to watch it again. I think I have to watch it again but it was one of those movies that just like I had a smile on my face like the entire movie. It, it just, it was, it just made me so happy. I just, it was such a joy to watch. I feel so dorky, but um, I loved it. I, I wanna, I already wanna watch it again. Has anybody else watched Castle for Christmas yet? I wanna know, I wanna know, like is it just me or was that one just like absolutely charming? I, it was, I mean, the accents, Carrie Elwes, the coziness of like the community. It was just like, it made me so happy. It made me so happy. And that is why I love Christmas movies. I don't know how you can watch a Christmas movie and then like come away feeling bummed out. I mean, I guess, I guess if you're watching Krampus, like my husband keeps trying to add to our Christmas movie list. That's a horror movie, by the way. I did watch it a few years ago. Not my style. I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to do scary movies around Christmas time. I don't even want to do scary movies any other day of the year. I'm already out of tea, so I guess, I guess I have to wrap up this video. But um, I would love to hear from you folks. Let me know, have you gone on a Christmas movie bender yet? I know we're only like three days into December. I. <laughs> I admit, I started early. I started way too early, probably. I'm gonna run out, well, no, I probably will not run out of Christmas movies. There are a ton of Christmas movies, and there are a ton of sequels. I have at least three princess switches to get through. Let me know in the comments, have you started your Christmas movie marathon yet? Have you seen A Castle for Christmas? Uh, if you have, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and a slash or, let me know your favorite Christmas movies. If you have a top five list, feel free to share in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you folks back here tomorrow with day number four. Bye.